In electronics repair, soldering is one of the most important and essential skills to have. In this video, I will show you how to solder and desolder both active and passive components found on most electronic circuit boards, so you can learn to repair them yourself. Soldering is much easier when you have all the right tools available. Obviously, the most important tool that you need to have is a soldering iron. And don't buy the cheapest one that you can find. Instead, try to find a good one with at least adjustable power output and temperature. For example, this one has an adjustable dial which can go up to 50 watts and 450 degrees Celsius. And you want a soldering iron that can achieve between 40 and 60 watts of power range so you can work with different types of solder material since the solder is an alloy different type of solder require different temperature to melt in order to use as solder and to be desoldered so get a good solder and now i have been using this simple adjustable soldering iron for a while and it works fine for me it has a little nice rack to place the soldering iron and the tip is adjustable which is a good thing you always want to find a soldering iron that has adjustable tip because the heat transfer largely depends on the surface volume and area of the tip. So this type of tip is not the most ideal but it does the work for most applications and sometimes you won't have a flathead screwdriver type of tip to have more surface area to transfer the heat better without actually increasing the temperature on the temperature adjustment dial. Another type of popular low-cost soldering iron is the butane gas-based soldering iron that you can refill. The advantage is that it doesn't have a cord, so you can use it everywhere. And it has a very high temperature output, although it's adjustable. And I have used this successfully, repairing several electronic devices. So if you're careful with it, you can actually use it for most soldering applications, not just for electrical wires on the cars, but also on electronics. The only thing you have to be careful is that because it's based on the liquid fuel, it needs an outlet to expel the heat that is excessive. So, for example, if I turn on this soldering iron, you can see there's a hole that is glowing red, and that's where the gas escapes with the heat. And if you're not careful, sometimes that can melt nearby components on a tight electronic board. So be careful when using this type of soldering iron. It gives you a lot of freedom, but if you're tired, if you're not being attentive, you can cause some damages that you don't expect. Other items that you need to have are the solder and the solder come in several varieties the most commonly found is a lead based solder which is generally 60% lead and 40% tin and this type of solder is being phased out because in many countries there are now no longer permitted to be used in electronics and the advantage of this type of solder is that it has a lower melting point which means it's easier to work with if you don't have very uh, advanced soldering equipment very basic solder can melt and desolder this type of solder and then you have the lid free solder wire which is an alloy of different metals for example this one has a 
97% uh, tin, 2% silver, and a little bit of copper. And these are common now in modern electronics because of the new regulation. And the advantage is that they are healthier for you and for the environment because lead is poisonous and in the long term can cause many problems in a person's health. So when you have a choice, use lead-free solder. However, that means generally you need to use a higher temperature for your soldering iron in order to melt the solder for both soldering and desoldering. Another essential item to have is the flux. And there are several types of flux. The purpose of the flux is to help you attach the solder once it's melted to the metal surface. And I have two types of flux. One is a Rosin flux, which is bought from Radio Shack and it's not so expensive. And you can see this jelly material inside. And it contains some lead, which is not healthy for you or the environment. So use caution when working with this on a frequent basis. I actually prefer this type of flux pen much better. It's a lead-free flux dispensing pen. You can find this at Radio Shack. You have to order it online or by mail. But it's definitely much easier to work with, especially if you work often with electronics. So I will show you here. You just have to open it and it looks like a highlighter. For example, I have a board here. If I need to solder some kind of component onto the board, all I have to do is to apply the flux onto the metal pad here and then I can solder it. So this is not messy and it doesn't leave sticky res residue like this type of Rosin solder. This type of Rosin solder has its own application, but I rarely use it. I know it's good for some larger electrical wires and systems. So those are the two choices. However, um, this one can come in handy when you don't have another choice. Almost every soldering iron you buy comes with a sponge, which is supposed to be used as a wet sponge after you pour a little bit of water on it to clean the tip of the soldering iron, like this. This one is dry, I haven't used it. So I don't really recommend you use this as a method to clean the soldering iron tip frequently, because when you touch an extreme hot soldering iron tip to the wet sponge, it causes a thermal shock. And when it's done frequently enough, it will shorten the lifespan of the soldering iron tip. And I have seen it happen because I actually cracked part of the tip in one of my previous experience. A better product to use to clean the soldering iron tip looks something like a pot and pan scrubber that you find in a grocery store and in fact it is made of the same type of copper material and it works like a charm for example this one that I didn't buy from a grocery store you can just insert the soldering iron tip inside and just scrub it a little bit and see it brings back the shine and it cleans the soldering iron tip really well so this if you can find it get it because for just a few dollars it's really really much better than the wet sponge and if you're close to a grocery store or a dollar store and you can't find this at the radio shack get a pot and pan scrubber because it will work pretty much the same way. another way to clean the tip of your southern iron when you don't have either the wet sponge or the copper scrubber is actually uh, quite simple. It's not professional at all, but in a pinch, it will do. For example, uh, you need to 
tin your soldering iron with a little bit of uh, solder and you need to clean the tip what you can do is you can actually use a q-tip use a q-tip quickly and brush off whatever is on the tip of the soldering iron just like this and the things will come off it's a very effective way of cleaning the soldering iron of course you don't want to leave the cotton part too long on the soldering iron because it will probably burn it could be surprisingly effective when you don't have anything else to use. Having the right type of tweezers can really help to make your soldering work a lot easier. The larger one will help you to hold the component while you're soldering or desoldering it. And also it helps to relieve some of the heat placed by the solder on the component. And I highly recommend, especially if you work a lot with electronics, especially SMD, surface mounted device, get a tweezer like this. It's a very small tweezer, and this one's particularly good because it's made in Germany and anti-acid and anti-static. It's very good when you are working with components like these, for example. They're extra small SMD components and you can't really use a normal tweezer to mount or unmount them when you're doing the soldering work so you need to have something small to work with them now i will show you how to solder a through hole component so in this example we will use a capacitor this is a class x2 film capacitor and it's usually used for line conditioning and filtering just before the main power supply and this is quite simple with this board I place it in the correct spot and the reason to call it through hole is because they do go through the various holes on the printed circuit board so now this is fixed in place I should apply some flux. If I have a flux pen like this, I could just put some flux around. And it can't hurt to put more flux than sometimes necessary because it helps the solder to attach to the metal part on the printed circuit board and here I have my soldering iron that I just cleaned the tip of it now what I want to do is I want to put a sufficient portion of solder on the tip of the soldering iron and then apply it onto the pin of the capacitor that I just inserted so this would be sufficient you don't want to put too much otherwise you'll create a big bubble and you have excessive solder so now with this in place you just have to lightly touch it and the solder should sit in place and there it's not so difficult and do the same thing for the other one put a little bit more solder on the tip and touch it lightly to the solder and there and make sure you check the joints for any cracks or missing connections. Actually, I could have put more solder, but this is sufficient for now. It's actually easier to work with a higher temperature with this type of lid-free solder. And I used about halfway of the temperature 
adjustment dial. So it's on medium high setting, medium setting. In the next example, I will show you how to mount an electrolytic capacitor. And the thing to keep in mind when you're working with an electrolytic capacitor is that there is a polarity to adhere. And the polarity can generally be found on the PCB itself. For example, under C7, there is a black mark and that indicates negative. So you need to match that with the white stripe on the electrolytic capacitor, which is this. And put through the holes. Once it's secure in place, we'll leave it under like this. You can even put something to keep it from falling, but this is light enough that I don't, I don't have to worry about it. So now, in the previous example, I used a flux dispensing pen like this. Now I will show you what to do if you don't have such flux dispensing pen, which is lead free. Unfortunately, sometimes all we have is this more toxic lead based Rosen flux, which you know is commonly found in places like Radio Shack or other electronics stores. And you want to use the cut and swap to dip just a little bit, enough to cover the pads on the PCB. And the pads are these two round metal base, which will eventually attach to the connector legs of the electrolytic capacitor. So apply generously all around the legs of the capacitor and the pad. And make sure you don't leave too much. Okay, this is not an ideal tool for applying because as you can see, some of the cotton parts have attached to the gel when you are applying it. However, you know, it's a cheap solution for what you need to do. And sometimes that's all you, you can find for the moment. Now, take the soldering iron, clean the tip, and now instead of a lid-free solder, I will use a lid-based solder 60% lid and 40% tin. And this one is a lot thicker than the other one. This is 1.5 millimeter, and the other one is 0 0.5 millimeter. So the procedure will be still the same. You want to apply a sufficient quantity, but not too much, on the tip of your soldering iron, like this. And once it's melted, Flip this PCB and just attach it onto the PCB as you can see. Instantly the solder flowed around the pad on the PCB and the leg of the electrolytic capacitor. And the reason for that is surface tension. When you have sufficient flux applied around the metal that you're trying to solder, when you touch melted solder directly onto the part that you're trying to solder, it will flow very fluidly all around the base. Now here is the second leg that we want to solder and there's still sufficient solder here on the tip to be applied. So here I will just look and make sure you check for any missing spot or hairline crack because you need to have a good connection so looks like that's done